So in a recent video of mine that you can find here, I actually did a review of the Samsung 980 Pro. It's their first PCIe 4 SSD, so it's theoretically double the bandwidth of their previous gen 970s, 960s, 60s, etc. Well, I mentioned in that video that I had one on the way for myself as well because my machine is both a gaming machine and a work machine and I needed room for the video files to edit while also having room for the monstrosity games such as like Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Uh, those games these days are seeing upwards to 250 gigs and it's just eating up my terabyte of space. So I got a 980 Pro for myself that I would like to actually use as my boot files uh, or sorry, sorry, for my boot drive, and I want to move my files over to it, like my games and whatnot, but then I want to make sure that my video files can stay on my previous card. So I'm going to go through the process of adding a new hard drive to your system and migrating your old boot data onto a new drive. So if you are looking to upgrade an S to an SSD for the first time or to a faster SSD like myself, uh, you don't lose your files and you don't have to run through all of the Windows installs and stuff. I do typically format my system and it's nice to format it every once in a while. It's, you know, cleans up the registry. It makes things go faster, uh, at least for a short while. My system was built maybe six months ago and I don't want to go through that hassle. I've just gotten all the hardware, all the config, the way I want it. There's no issues going on. It's just solely I need more space. So I'm going to move my OS to the faster drive and then move my videos to the slightly slower drive. So let's go through that process, upgrade the system, and I'll walk you through the steps. Oh wait, ah fuck. So before I would have gotten to this phase, I would have done some research. I would have confirmed that if I'm adding drives to this, I had uh, the additional ports if I needed it. So SATA, IDE, or M2, or sometimes even just the PCIe slot. But I would have also made sure that just because I had that port that there was spare. If you don't have spare you will, and you want to retain your operating system, your files, you'll need an external USB drive or uh, there's caddies that you can put both drives in it and they'll clone to each other. Uh, that's going to be slower, but it will allow you to retain your data. Then you can unplug your old drive, put the new one in. In my case, I'm going with the traditional M2 bubblegum stick slot here. I have plenty on my board. I have ones that support M or, sorry, PCIe 4. So I'm going to be able to take full advantage of the stick and keep my old stick in there. My caveat is I want to move my operating system to the new faster stick. So without losing those files, we're going to put both of these in here. I'm going to run some special software, show you how to configure that to boot to the new drive and then wipe the old one. So if my camera can catch this, I have my first M2 there. I actually have a heat sink shield that I can put my other M2 underneath this. But to get to it easily, I'm going to have to uh, temporarily move my GPU out of the way. So we're gonna do that right now. So I simply unplugged uh, the power supply. There's um, screws on the side here that you will need to remove to get the bracket out of the way. And then there's a key, there's a little tab. It's hard to see, but there's a tab underneath your graphics card, you're going to want to toggle that. Otherwise you're going to break it off or risk breaking your graphics card. So push that down. Now my card should come straight out, which it does. Perfect. My blower style, not my favorite, but it was the only one available at the time. Uh, my blower style 2080 super. And now I'm left with this little heat sink here. And so my less performant, let's say, or less used SSD, I'll leave out here. I kind of put it out there with the plan of getting the 980. I knew they were announced. I was just waiting on it. So I'm going to have to take apart. This is kind of my least favorite part about these designs now. There's all these little screws. Hopefully, th it seems like they're spring-loaded, so they may just stay in the adapter, which would be ideal. Otherwise, chasing these things down in your case is a real pain. So if I zoom in, you can see that there's this little groove in the M2 and you want to make sure you line it up with the M2 slot and it doesn't have to be, you know, 90 degrees right away. Kind of line it up there, but don't be too aggressive of an angle. Get it in there and then there we go. Now expect it to rise a little bit like that. That's fine. Uh, that's what the, these little lifts are for, for uh, threading and screws. If you don't have those and for some reason the M2 seems way off the board, you're going to want to locate, they came with 
your motherboard or you're gonna have to find some screws that fit into that, that thread, sorry, those uh, uh, lifts in there first and then it should sit at a perfect, even uh, level uh, uh, setup here where then I can put a screw through this and hold it down. So let me grab that screw quick. Well, as luck would have it, I don't happen to have the screw. Normally, I try to still thread in all of these spare M2 screws when you get the motherboard. Apparently, I forgot to do it on this one, but since I'm putting a heat sink over the top, like the uh, built-in heat sink, it will actually hold it down. Now, a key thing here is there's almost always some sort of film on this that you wanna take off first to allow good thermal transfer. This will hold that down just fine, luckily, because it is this spot. Now, if I was uh, utilizing the other slot, I'd be in a little bit more trouble. So I'm going to just do this. I'm not, you know, driving around with this in my truck or anything, so I shouldn't have any sort of issues uh, with this unseating, but that's disappointing, and I will have to try and, I guess, buy... Um, a singular screw because Samsung apparently saves money by not shipping you one and if you didn't save it at the time of your motherboard it is gone for good. And so there we have it. Everything's back in. You can see that the heat sink is back on. I've screwed it in. That's It's not going anywhere. It's not a concern of mine um, at the moment. I will still get a screw just out of due diligence. Uh, but time to put the, the graphic card back in. Make sure you line up the slot as well uh, on the board, both that and on the case. You should hear a little bit of a click when that tab comes back up and then secure this card. And this is more important than my hard drive, to be honest, on securing because of the weight of this graphics card um, to make sure that something's in here helping hold this up and it's not wearing on that slot. Okay, so let's go back up to the computer desk, hook it all up, and then do the file transfer. It's going to take a little bit of time, but I'll show you the software that I use and how to kick it off now that I have two drives in here to move one to the other. So for software, I went with Macrium. I've never personally used it before this project. I've used similar software, and the key to me was it was adware free. I didn't have to purchase a license to do what I wanted to do, which was simply clone one drive to another and I didn't even have to provide my email address. So I grabbed the installer, downloaded it, and ran through basically just clicking next, next, next until the software was up and running. So at this point, now that I have the software up and running, I essentially click clone this disk and I will have the steps in the description below, but I had to stop the recording so my data could copy from one disk to the other. It took about 15 minutes. So I open up disk management and you can access this by right clicking the start button and going to disk management. And this allows me to see whatever hard drives or USB thumb drives I have connected to my system. You can now see that I've cloned my C drive to what this is seen as a D drive at the moment. Uh, they have equal partitions. They both have recovery. They both have a healthy data partition. And now essentially I want to reclaim my old drive and make that just a solid one terabyte disk that I can use for generic data. So I'm going to open up the command prompt as administrator to make sure that I have enough writes. And to do that, just simply click the start button, type the letters C, M, D. And when you see the command prompt option there, right click it and choose run as administrator. And that will be important. Otherwise you won't be able to do disk operations that you need to. 
So now that I have the command prompt open, I'm going to type disk part, which gets me into a disk management system, and then list disk. So I can see the different disks that I have. Uh, since mine are similar size of both one terabyte, I'm going to, going to select disk zero, and then I'm going to type detail disk, and it will show me here that this is the 980 Pro, it's my new drive. And just to confirm, I will select disk one, detail disk, and I can see that is my older drive and the one that I want to format because it will be slightly slower. Yes, I know, only slightly slower, but that's where I want just my video files and things I'm not accessing all the time. It's important to note that if the operating system wasn't on this disk, I could have just right clicked in disk management on that disk one and chose to format and been on my way. But because the operating system was there, it does not allow me to do that. It has several partitions, those little individual chunks that are making up that one terabyte. So I actually have to terminate those before I can choose to format it. Hence why I'm going down the route of using disk part. I accidentally closed my terminal there. So I open it back up, I go back into disk part, I list my disks, just always out of caution again. I'm gonna select that disk one because that's the disk I wanna format. And now I'm going to type list partition. Those So those little individual chunks on that disk, I need to actually terminate each one of those to be able to format this drive and use it for my data. So I'm going to select each one of these partitions one at a time, select partition one, for example, and I'm going to delete partition. Now here, initially, if you don't provide the word override, uh, you will be blocked by it because it is detected as the operating system disk, which it previously was. So with each of these partitions, I'm going to select the partition and type delete partition override to force delete it. And now that it is unallocated, I can right click it and disk manager and choose new simple volume, just next, next, and it'll use the max amount. I can give it a drive letter if I want. I can rename it if I want on the next page here as well. So it shows up as a unique name in both disk manager and uh, your my computer. And I can then just finish this out. And I now have a new mounted drive. And so there you have it. I've added a new M2 drive to my system uh, to expand capacity. I copied over all of my system, registry, applications, everything to that brand new drive. And then I formatted the old drive and allocated the drive letter D to it, named it videos. And now I have a location for all of my video data while I have uh, the new faster 980 Pro for my operating system, applications to run on, games, etc.